When the landing crafts reach the transfer control line, just beyond the reef's edge, Japanese smoke shells begin to fall. Smoke screens block the Marines' view of what's ahead. Before we landed, you had this horrendous bombardment before the first wave hit. Now, once you start ashore and you start landing, most of the, that kind of stuff ceases after all the shelling and bombs stopped. When the Japanese came out, set up their mortar shells and their artillery pieces, they already had the beaches zeroed in, and so they just started unloading. We were just jammed up on that beach. I don't know how many ways stacked up, but I know we were stacked up on that beach. That's why when they drilled in on those amphibious tractors that were carrying us in, we jumped out before we got to the beach one at a time, you know, as opposed to in a group. Waves, you know, the first wave, now you've got X minutes to move up with some planets that you're supposed to be. So when the next wave comes in, that first wave is gone. And then it just goes back. So when wave five comes in, the first four are gone. Well, that looks good on paper. But it doesn't always work that way. And it didn't there either. The assault waves press on, but the landing does not go as well as the generals planned. The Marines are pinned down by a deadly crossfire, and there's no cover at all, except behind a dead Marine. We just piled up on the beach, and they were lobbing those shells into our landing craft. And when you've got a whole bunch of troops on the beach, you're just sitting ducks. Lost a lot of people. Apparently it was hell hole, hot. It was a dinky place. I don't think it was more than three by two. They had the high ground, and so there was no point in them charging us on low ground. We had to get them. Besides that, they had such good cover. I mean, it was just dirt scratching to get, get them out of that place. From his hidden vantage point on the high ground, Colonel Nakagawa radios General Inoue. Reinforcements unnecessary. Invasion will be crushed by end of day. September 15, 1944. 30 minutes into the invasion of Peleliu, when Marines should have been establishing a beachhead. Wave after wave of assault troops are hopelessly pinned down. When the Marines attempted to land at Peleliu, they were greeted by a hail of shells filled with smoke to create a smoke screen, which caused a lot of confusion slowed them down, made them more vulnerable as targets for Japanese artillery that was focused on the landing site. It takes four hours of raging battle for the Marines to advance only 50 yards. Admiral Nimitz's operation has prophetically lived up to its name, Stalemate. The island of Angor is about five miles southwest of Peleliu. In the context of the fighting, it's important because it's flat. You can build an airfield there. After the Americans landed on Peleliu, the defenders at, at Angor had to ready themselves for an American attack. And they didn't have the advantage of terrain that they had on Peleliu, so they just were entrenching themselves. Flight of about 50 American aircraft came over and they were struck just about sunset time, which had a devastating effect on their morale. And some of them took this as an omen of things to come in the future. The day after invasion, two regimental combat teams of the U.S. Army land unopposed on Unguar Island. 
What they don't know is on the northwest end of the island, 1,600 Japanese soldiers are ready to follow orders and fight to the death, even though they are hopelessly outnumbered. While the fighting goes on, American engineers arrive on Unguar to construct an airfield in the event the one on Peleliu is not captured. On Peleliu, Colonel Nakagawa prepares to launch his counterattack to crush the invasion once and for all. Concealed behind the network of underground tunnels, Japanese forces mobilize from all over the island. It isn't that you aren't scared, but you're not scared 24 hours, you know, you're degrees of being scared. You're in a dangerous situation. And yeah, there's that possibility you're going to not make it. But I don't really think too many people dwell on it because it's not good for the soul. It's a job and, and you do it and what happens, happens. See, what made this so bad, it was hotter in Hades. 110, 115, 120, it was just blistering hot. We had as many casualties from heat exhaustion as we did gunshot, and maybe even more. We were supposed to have the airfield within an hour after we landed, but it wasn't the opposition on the ground, see, it was how they had it zoned in from those caves in that mountain that was down the middle. So you had to sort of get rid of some of that. 